Here at Tormach, we want to help you make things. So let's talk about picking tools for mold making. Before we talk about the tools, it's best to first understand what mold making consists of. There really is an art to creating a mold, whether it's for foundry work or just basic injection molding. Understanding the concepts behind the process are important to not only making the best part possible, but making the part at all. Like so many other things associated with the world of machining, there are countless varieties of mold making techniques. So let's just look at making an injection mold. These typically consist of two machined halves that are pressed together. The empty space between the two halves, also known as the cavity, is then filled with your material, whether it's some sort of plastic, rubber, or even molten metal. Depending on the material and shape being cast, the mold will have strategic vents for air to escape as it fills. The final part will often have tolerances set for surface finish, consistency, and flashing, that bit of material that squeaks out of the space between the two halves. All of these tolerances are determined by both the material you're putting in the mold and the goal of your final product. For instance, if you're making plastic cups or disposable cutlery with your mold, your tolerances are much easier to deal with. In contrast, if your parts are for the medical industry or the aerospace industry, the tolerances must be withheld to the strictest of standards. With all that being said, tolerances on molds are usually much tighter than other machine parts. So it's important to pick out the right tools for the job. First, when you're putting together two halves, they need to be lined up. So leader pins or alignment pins are almost always present in molds. Those pins need their complement, a hole to line everything up. Your mold will only be as precise as your alignment pins. So it's important that they are consistent and accurate. Reamers are designed to make long straight holes and can make your alignment holes quickly and accurately when compared to using a standard end mill. When you're cutting a mold, you're often dealing with complex and contoured surfaces. Using a ball end mill or a ball cutter is essential to getting a quality surface finish and the exact shape that you're looking for in your mold. Inserted tools are your best friend when cutting a mold. Molds generally require a lot of material removal and insert cutters like the shear hog and the die jet modular cutter can make short work of a large piece of stock. These cutters are perfect for mold making because you can get different inserts with different geometries that are designed for the materials that you're cutting. Having inserts also means it can be less expensive to replace the cutting surface as your tool wears. The tool itself might be more expensive initially, but replacing inserts is far more economical than end mills. Thanks for watching. Check out all of our latest videos here, and for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.